Hey there, my name is Colleen Fazio. I'm a guitar amplifier repair tech and builder in Los Angeles. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make sure there's no voltage present in your amp by discharging the filter capacitors. And this is to make sure that the amp is safe to work on and there's no chance of getting a shock. If you are uncomfortable in any way working on an amp where voltage might be present, it's best to just take the amp to a qualified repair technician. So a few safety notes to begin. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your amp is unplugged from the wall. And when you're poking around in the amp, you're gonna to wanna to use a wooden chopstick because wood does not conduct electricity. You, for example, do not wanna use a screwdriver because that would be like sticking a knife in a toaster, not good. So now I'm gonna show you how to locate the filter caps in your amp and the different types of caps that you might see. So what is a filter capacitor? Like the name suggests, it filters out noise after the rectifier stage. Um, right here is the rectifier tube on this CHAMP schematic. It converts the wall AC to DC, which will be used in the amp. So after that, we have the filter capacitors, one, two, three, and these here are the voltage dropping resistors. If a filter cap is bad, you may hear hum, which is because there is DC ripple present. They may be located on the circuit board near the power transformer. And on this CHAMP layout, I'll show you these are the three filter capacitors. Here's the power transformer. Um, these are the three caps that I had highlighted in this schematic previously. Or it's in the form of a multi-section can, which is located on the tube mounting side of the chassis. You can see this one here is four sections, one, two, three, four. Each one is 20 microfarad at 475 volts. And if these sections were different values, you'd be able to tell which is which by this, uh, the different shapes right here. I'll show you as an example with this old cap I have here, you can see there's a triangle on this tab, a square, and a half moon here. Um, this one's blank, the fourth one is usually blank, and then there's one, two, three, four ground tabs along the edge. In a lot of fender amps, they're located on the tube side of the chassis in this doghouse. Boom, there they are. These have been changed, they're obviously not original, and it's not the prettiest job ever, but what are you gonna do? Maybe I'll make it look a little nicer, we'll see. So now I'm gonna show you how to measure DC volts with our multimeter. We're gonna turn it on to the DC voltage setting. The other volt setting is to measure AC. And we're gonna take our black probe. This is the probe that needs to be grounded. And the way I like to do that is using an alligator clip. Clip one end to ground, and here I just have it clipped to the screw that the power cord is grounded to. And then uh, the other end we clip to our black probe. And this is so that we don't have to hold both the black and red probes in our hand. It keeps the black probe free and then we measure with the red probe. A good rule of thumb when doing this is to keep one hand tucked in your pocket and the other hand is free to make the measurements. And this is because you want to avoid completing a circuit with your body because there is a possibility that if you get shocked, the current could flow through you. So if you have a vintage amp that hasn't been powered on in like decades, it's probably safe to assume there's no voltage inside there, but it's always, always a good idea to check. You never want to assume anything when it comes to voltage. So for the sake of this demo, I'm going to turn the amp on and show you the high voltage measurements on these caps. So we're going to take the black probe of our meter and attach it to ground. And then with our red probe, we're going to touch it to the positive ends of the capacitor. And as you can see, there's a little negative sign with an arrow pointing this way. So we know these ends are the negative ends. And then these ends must be the positive. And then on these caps, it's clearly shown which end is positive. So here we go. We've got about 452 volts. Again, 452, 457, 
So yeah, that's some pretty high voltage right there. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we turn the amp off. We can see the voltage draining from the caps. And to expedite this process, I'm gonna send all of the remaining voltage to ground through a resistor. So I'm going to use this 470 ohm resistor. You can use like anywhere from a 100 ohm to 1K, whatever you got. Um, and then with an alligator clip, we attach one end of the resistor to ground, which is right here. And then with the other end of the resistor, we're just going to touch on the positive terminals of the caps for a few seconds. We want to be sure to use a resistor because it prevents a spark, usually. <laughs> if we didn't use the resistor and just touched the positive lead of the cap to ground, there would definitely be a spark and it could possibly damage the capacitor. So if we were to drain the cap without a resistor, it would look something like this. So to be extra safe, we're going to take one more measurement on the positive ends just to make sure we read close to zero volts. And yeah, we've got 0.6, which is essentially zero. So the amp is safe to work on. And if you still have a couple volts present, just take your resistor and discharge again. So if you've gotten something out of this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be making some more demo videos and showcasing some repairs down the line. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see me demonstrate, leave feedback in the comments. I'd love to make a video for you. These safety steps are really important, so make sure you always follow them when you're working on your amp, and it'll become like second nature to you as you go. So uh, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.